Welcome to the PDN Analyzer 2.0 On Demand Training. As we continue, Module 4 will cover interactive capabilities for viewing voltage drop and current density graphical results. To view results, I'll open a configuration file from the previous module's analysis run. The network.pdna configuration file contains all of the setting and brings back all of the result information from that run. Next, I'll switch over to the Visual tab, and here we can take a look at voltage drops and current density information. We'll first take a look at many of the other display options available to represent the information. What you see is voltage drop information annotated onto the traces of the power in network and the VCC in network. This is shown relative to the color gradient, which red on the far right represents the maximum voltage, and blue on the left represents the minimum voltage. This can actually be displayed in terms of voltage if I choose the displayed button here. Likewise, if I switch to current density, the amperage per millimeter square is shown. Over on the right is the maximum, and over on the left is the minimum, which is typically zero if there's no current flow at all. We can take a look at finding peak values in a minute, but I'll show you some other display features that are available. I can enable and disable nets and enable and disable individual layers. This makes it easier to focus on specific portions of the design. Another helpful view is the 3D view. If I select it and then choose Overlay, it gives me a realistic representation of the PCB. And I can zoom and pan in 360 degrees. So it helps out in terms of zooming in to view vias and other objects in 3D mode. In the current direction portion of the settings, if I choose Show Arrows, this will annotate current flow direction information onto the traces, which can be very helpful to show current flow throughout the PDN. I can probe specific locations of the PCB to capture voltage measurements or current density measurements. By clicking Location 1 and hovering over a specific object, I can click and capture that reading at that point. I could add this to a report for future use, or I could copy it to the clipboard for using it in a text file. There is also a difference mode, which allows me to pick a second location. And when I choose that location, it will calculate the difference and report that. So very helpful to have a way to capture precise points and differences between points anywhere in the layout. Highlight peak values enables the ability to find maximums and minimums in voltage or current density. We're currently in current density mode, and I'll set this to find the maximum in the entire design. So I can set the scope from in view to the entire design, and then click locate, and it will jump to the highest point of current density. Likewise, I can go through the list and find the next value in descending order clicking through and finding the next location. If I switch to voltage, I can do the same thing and look for the minimum if I want to find the absolute lowest voltage drop in the entire design. Selecting minima, click locate, and it'll jump to the point of lowest voltage measured. There is also a voltage contour capability. By enabling it, I can find a percentage point of the voltage drop 
and there's a slider that lets me change the value. What this shows is a threshold point of the percentage specified. So if I set this to 50, I can find the 50% point of the voltage drop. And that is helpful if I want to route, let's say, a sense line for a switch mode power supply. So I can set this to any threshold I wish, and it will simply move that marker to that point. This can also be set to indicate the actual voltage level. So I can move that around and it will display voltage accordingly. Likewise, there are similar specific point settings that you can specify in this field and it will mark those. Also included in the result information are summary tabs for pins, vias, and specific nets. If I click on the pins tab, it will show me component pins, their nets, measured voltage, and measured current. Now these lists can be sorted by component or by voltage or current. So very handy in terms of finding which pin has the most current or voltage in the design. Similarly, for vias, there's a listing of all vias by net, location, start layer, stop layer, start layer voltage and stop layer voltage, as well as current through the via and current density. And again, these lists can be sorted from max to min. Per net, there are voltage source and load summaries, which indicate pass fail and details relative to the limit checks that were found in the setup of our network configurations. If we go back to the config tab, this shows the summary, and the summary indicates a violation, particularly in the VCC int network. If I click on it, it will show me the detail of the network, and then if I hover over the net, it will display, in this case, a worst current violation and that is specific to a via and its actual current value which exceeds the limit set in our configuration. To find this, I can simply hover over the message and double click. And this will take me to that point in the design. I can then get to the properties of this via directly through the PCB editor. And I could change the size of the via simply by selecting another template. In this case, I'll want to increase the size of the via used. We can run a quick analysis and then check and see if the result's clear. I've made the change and I'll click Analyze to rerun. Increasing the size of the via resolves the violation and I've now cleared the error. Using this type of approach, we can use the PDN Analyzer to investigate problems and then jump right back into regular editing and routing commands to resolve problems. And this facilitates a Analyze, Modify, Analyze methodology, allowing you to catch problems early on during the layout process. This concludes Module 4. Here we have seen how to interactively explore voltage drop and current density graphical result information. In Module 5, we will explore how to generate HTML report documents. Please complete Exercise 4 at this time.